Hi, I'm Jelly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make brownies with carob powder. I've got some right here and I've shown you how to make brownies before. Here on my channel, way back on my channel, I have a recipe for peanut butter brownies. And that brownie recipe is actually in my cookbook and then I just made a peanut butter layer for that. So this is a little bit different of a brownie recipe than that one. That one is delicious, it's really chocolatey, really fudgy. If you like chocolate, those are the brownies for you. But if you can't have chocolate or for some reason maybe don't like chocolate, then carob powder is a really good substitute. I bought it through Azure and I will put the link below. And this was a one pound bag and it actually fits really nicely in this container that I'm not sure exactly how big it is. I'll find out and I'll put a link for this jar in the description box below. So I wanted to show you that this is the package that it came in, but I find it's easier to put it into a jar because it is a powder and it seems actually a little lighter and fluffier than cocoa powder. So it seems to puff out of the bag a little bit and it's easier to just measure into a measuring cup. So that's what I do. And I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but it is a, a really pale brown color compared to cocoa powder. Maybe I'll get a side by side for you. Let me open this up. So here is just regular cocoa powder. It's not the special dark, it's just regular. And you know, now that I've got them side by side, there is a definite color difference. And of course, cocoa powder is notorious for clumping like that. But the carob powder is really fine and doesn't clump. Now I have already been experimenting with my carob powder. So what you see here, I've already used some. So this is not all of the one pound bag that I bought. So I just need a half a cup of the carob powder. And the recipe that I've experimented with so far with this carob powder is my no-bake cookies that are also here on my channel. I thought that would be a really good starting point kind of see how it works in that particular recipe. And it turned out really well, and it is delicious. So that looks about like my half cup that I want. And then I'll show you, it is, it is really fluffy. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it is really fluffy and light and airy. And it does kind of the same thing that cocoa powder does, kind of coats the spoon. And I've been really happy with this. My no-bake cookies, they turned out delicious. And it works just like cocoa powder. And on the, on the package it says you can use it in a one-to-one -one ratio to cocoa powder. I need to preheat the oven to 350. I've got an eight by eight pan greased with butter. Because my, my other brownie recipe is really fudgy and chocolatey, I wanted more of just a simple basic brownie recipe to use the carob powder. This looks like a lot more butter than what's in here. I have half cup plus three tablespoons of butter and I cut it into chunks and I've had it sitting out but I want this to be melted. So very carefully do not explode your butter in the microwave. You could do this in a saucepan if you want to. And then very minimal ingredients. I have three quarters of a cup of my gluten-free flour and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. That is it for the dry ingredients. And then you certainly don't need a hand mixer, but I'm using a hand mixer today. So this is what I'm looking for with my butter. And then I've just got a little whisk here. <laughs> it's actually a cocktail whisk, but it's really good for small things like this and it's got a long handle. So there's still a little bit of chunks of butter in here but the residual heat from the melted butter and the container will melt that the rest of the way. In fact, it's already melted. So I'm gonna very carefully pour it in. It kind of reminds me of tapioca starch or powdered sugar. If you just plop it in, it will be a cloud. And this carob powder that I'm using today, it is roasted. I believe you can get a variety that is not roasted. And I wanted to use a whisk just so I can get in here and mix this around. And so far, it's really interesting how thick it is. I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't absorb the butter like this, but look at that. 
and hopefully you can see the color. There we go. And because this is still really warm, I'm going to set that aside to cool and we can start mixing together our other ingredients first. So I've got, let's go with our honey first. I've got a half a cup of honey. And I will give you the equivalence to sugar in the description box below. So I've got three eggs here. I'm just gonna crack my eggs in with my honey. And I do have everything at room temperature. Ooh. Don't get any eggshells in there. So there goes my third egg in with my honey. I've got one teaspoon of vanilla. And the reason I wanted to make brownies today, oh, I suppose you could make cookies or something like that, but I already made my no-bake cookies with the carob powder. So I wanted to go with brownies because I think it would be a really good idea of what the carob powder tastes like in a baked recipe like this. Of course, my no-bake cookies, they're no-bake cookies, although you do heat up the mixture in a saucepan. So it does kind of liquefy the carob powder but I thought this would be really good because this is baked. So now with my honey, my eggs, and my vanilla, I'm just gonna get this started and mix till it's really well combined. Another reason I chose this particular recipe to experiment with is because I've made it before with cocoa powder. I've also made it before with an unsweetened bar of chocolate. So I would say I've got a, a few different versions of this recipe under my belt already, not to mention gluten-free and with honey. So I, I know how this recipe works with cocoa powder, with the other melted chocolate, and it's pretty fail-proof. But when you're experimenting with a new product, such as carob powder, that's replacing one of the main ingredients, so it should work really well with the carob powder. Now the funniest thing, I think every kid has had the experience in the kitchen where you're baking with your mom or your grandma or your siblings or whatever and you see the cocoa powder and you understand that it's chocolate therefore you think it will be delicious and then you taste the cocoa powder and it's the worst thing you've ever had and you don't understand how it can be something delicious in the end i haven't tasted the carob powder on its own but i thought about it i guess i'm not that curious and it feels pretty cool to the touch. So I'm just going to dump it into my eggs, honey, and vanilla mixture here. And I noticed that the texture seems a little bit grainy, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think it's just the nature of carob. But the color is really interesting. It kind of reminds me of a cross between chocolate and caramel. So now just mix this on about medium speed. It really doesn't take very much at all. Now for my three quarters of a cup of gluten-free flour and my three quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'll just mix this on low speed. And once it looks like this, where the flour is mostly mixed in, I'm gonna to switch to my spatula. I don't want any big pockets of flour in here. So the texture is definitely different, but it still looks good and it still smells good. It doesn't smell like chocolate, it smells like carob, which is not a bad thing at all. It's just those things that you notice that are different. Whenever you're making substitutions, whether it's a dairy substitution, gluten-free substitution, sugar-free, all of those things. You're aiming for a really good version of what the original is, but I think the expectation is that it will be the exact same. And sometimes you can get really, really close, but sometimes you can't. But I think, I think we'll be able to make a really delicious brownie 
with the carob powder. Usually whenever I make this recipe, I always double it and put it in a nine by 13. Because I'm experimenting today and I wanna make sure that these are delicious, I didn't wanna end up with a nine by 13 pan if it wasn't exactly what I'm going for. So now we just spread this out into an even layer. This brownie recipe, I've made so many times that you get creative after a while. It's still a delicious recipe, but then you start adding things in. Oh, like chocolate chips or nuts, things like that. As you can see today, I don't want any add-ins just because I wanna get the full flavor of the carob powder. So this goes in the oven, again at 350, for about a half hour. I'll probably start checking it at about 20 minutes and then we'll test it with a toothpick. My brownies have been going for about 25 minutes. And you know, it's so interesting. And this is what we're looking for. Mostly clean. There are a couple of pieces there. It smells like brownies. So before I opened the oven, I could smell it. And it, it's getting dark around the edges, but nowhere burnt. Don't worry, it's not burned at all. But it smells like brownies. And then as soon as I open the oven and bring it out here, it smells like the carob, but it almost has a fruity smell to it. It's so interesting. Because you you think in your head, you're like, oh, it, it really does smell like brownies. But then you're like, wait, that's not brownies. Oh, I'm really excited to try them. I didn't put my toothpick directly in the center just because it looks like the center of it is not as baked as the rest of it. Of course, the edges are more baked than even where I tested, but the, the edges are my favorite part of a brownie anyways. A corner is the best, but I'll take any edge. So now we wanna let these cool off for at least a half hour. My carob brownies have been cooling for about, oh, about 45 minutes. And they're just barely, barely warm on the bottom. And you know, I thought they would sink down a little bit more, but they didn't. So I'm just gonna loosen the sides. If you buttered your casserole dish, they should come out. And I probably don't need a knife, but that's all right. I think the corner one's gonna be a challenge to get out first. So let's try this one. I should have had a plate ready. Look, it came right out. It's not even sticking at all. Let's move that out of the way, get a better look here at our Cara brownies. They are still just barely, barely warm. And you know, I will say, it almost looks like the texture of a cake rather than a brownie. Here's what the bottom looks like. I do have a nice crust along the edge here. Yeah, it definitely seems more cake-like. And now I'm thinking for a really good comparison, I should have done this exact same recipe with cocoa powder just to see what the difference is actually side by side. And you know what, I've got time. I think I'm actually gonna do that. So here is my chocolate brownies that I made the exact same way, except I used cocoa powder instead of the carob powder. And you can see there is distinct differences. And these are still just barely warm on the bottom. And I have not tasted these yet. But let's look at side by side. Now, of course, they do look different. These ones are a darker brown. So let's go ahead and cut these the exact same way. And I'll take out the centerpiece to put on the plate with our carob centerpiece. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> haven't given myself enough room here. Let's move that over. And then I'll take this little one. I didn't even loosen the sides and it's still just coming right away. 
So let's move these aside here and see if we can get a really good view of the difference. Now on their sides, the carob brownie is puffier and the crumb is different. The carob brownie reminds me more of a cake and then the brownie reminds me more of a brownie. Such an interesting difference. This is what you would kind of expect when you're experimenting with a product that is a substitute for a different product. I think I'm mostly surprised. I knew it would be a little bit lighter in color, but I think I'm mostly surprised by the texture. And my brownies, they sunk down like brownies do, and they're denser and, and they look fudgier. Again, the carob powder is more of a cake-like brownie. Okay, I've saved myself two ends over here. I think I'll try the carob powder first. And I like the edges. It's really soft. And it tastes really good. It has really good flavor. I guess I'm trying to think in my mind if somebody offered me one of these, if I would think it is a chocolate brownie. I would think that you might think it's something. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. I think that, let me use the right words here. I, I think if, if you were to try this and somebody said, here, try my brownie, you would definitely ask, well, what kind of chocolate is in here? Is, is it milk chocolate? But then milk chocolate's usually a lot sweeter. So it's really good. So now let's take a bite of a traditional brownie. Gluten-free, of course, and made with honey as well. And this one is really good. I, I knew it would be good because it's my recipe and I, I've made it many times before. But it really is so interesting having them compared side by side. And even my brownie, it's, it's a lot denser and of course chocolatey but i think the main flavor difference that i i can put a word to is this one tastes more bitter because you know unsweetened chocolate which is cocoa powder is a little on the bitter side both are equally delicious so this is not chocolate so i think if you have that mindset going in then you realize that it won't be exactly what it is originally, but it's a really good substitution. Well, this has been a really fun, really delicious experiment. Maybe we've all learned something today. I know I certainly have. And then I found out that this holds four cups. So about 32 ounces is the size of this jar. And uh, don't forget, I will put the link for the carob powder in the description box. And I got that through Azure Standard. If you use my link in the description box and you use my share code, that does earn me a small commission that helps me bring you more videos like this. If you can't have chocolate, this is a really good substitute. Again, is it exactly like chocolate or cocoa powder? No, but it really is a good substitute. So when you get some carob powder, let me know what you experiment with. And maybe you don't even care about a chocolate substitute. I still have given you a delicious brownie recipe that is not as rich and chocolatey as my other brownie recipe. Who says you can't have more than one really delicious brownie recipe? So I guess for that matter, let me know what you think if you make either of these brownie recipes. Both are equally delicious. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.